So, field days, uh, June 24th, 25th, are there any questions? <laughs> June 24th, 25th. All right. A little background, uh, field day started in 1933. Uh, in 1937, the very first field day message was sent. And in 1940, the rules evolved to the point where they are pretty similar to the field day rules today. Uh, the modern class, uh, uh, classes, or the field day classes were established in 1950. And in 1966 is when the bonuses started to appear in, uh, in the scoring mechanism. And in 1976, um, and obviously the conditions were better then, uh, uh, a, a, one of the field day entrants had over 10,000 contacts. The first field day, the winning score was 62 contacts. So it has changed uh, a lot of it. And that was uh, W1 Victor Victor uh, Portable up in uh, one land again. So, anyway, when you get ready to, to, yes. Well, you have the eleven-year sunspot cycle, so they go up, they go down, they go up. Yes, yes. But you, 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 but you just made one of my other points that we'll get to shortly. So that's a little bit of background in terms of the history. Hey, Mark, how you doing? All right. Welcome. Good to see you. Um, so when you get ready to plan an event like this. Sometimes it's best to just forget all the limitations and sort of blue sky what, uh, what could be done. So for those of you who sign up for field day, a limousine will appear at your house and we'll pick you up in time to transport you to the field day site. Uh, obviously, this will be before your shift. We'll have a masseuse there to get you relaxed and, and, and ready to go. Yeah. Uh, of course, we will have picked out the most modern rigs from our AARC inventory at the AARC warehouse. You guys didn't know that my shed was actually that big. <laughs> now, if you've made your goal for your shift, then one of the possibilities is that you could be wined and dined after being having a successful shift. Um, or perhaps you'd uh, take one of the luxury cruises down the James. <laughs> and that guy that's waving looks a lot like Tim, KG4HOT, by the way. No. So, of course, if you don't make your goal, then your call sign gets put into a pool and we'll pull the uh, uh, call sign and the, the winner of the losers will get to keep the Albemarle Amateur Radio Club Mobile Command Center in your front yard for the next 12 months. So it's good to have an incentive. So why do we talk about field day every year? Well, one is we want to promote more participation. Uh, last year, we had 56 participants and field day. And for a club our size, that's, uh, that's pretty good turnout. Um, but so you ask yourself, well, you know, why, why is it that sometimes people don't participate? Well, some, some folks are a little bashful about operating in front of their friends. Um, some people have mic fright. Well, if you're a member of this club with all the mics we have in this club, you know, <laughs> you shouldn't have mic fright. So there you go. Um, some people don't do contesting or they're a little nervous about the logging software or they have no HF operating experience. I, we tend to forget, or those of us who have had licenses for quite some time uh, who came in operating HF is where we were cutting our teeth, uh, we're familiar with, with that. But if you recall, a while back the, the licensing uh, structure changed and the entrants that are coming into the hobby now are coming in cutting their teeth on VHF, UHF. And operating on HF is a lot different from operating on VHF, UHF. So, and one of the things that I think is really neat about Field Day, it's an opportunity for us to, to get some of those VHF, UHF operators sitting down in front of an HF radio and, and getting them excited about what they can do on HF. So that's one of the things that I think is important about Field Day.
So why do we do field day? We need to develop skills to deal in case of a disaster. And you're probably sitting there saying, well, we're, we hardly ever have disasters here. I remember one field day many, many years ago. We were fortunate because we were seeing these massive thunderstorms coming through and they were going to the north of the field day site and they were going south of the field day site. And the next week, the bridges washed out on 29. <laughs> Guess what? We had, we had a disaster we had to deal with. So you never can tell when you're going to have to go out into the field and set up a station and provide communications. Um, we want to expose the hobby to others. It's a lot of camaraderie and friendship that takes place at field day. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and we also want to promote the hobby using through the media. So contest, competition. And of course, did I mention food? Yeah. So, June 24th, 25th. Setup starts Saturday at 9. We're actually going to do a little bit of a setup Friday. Uh, that'll be primarily tents and antennas. Um, and we're planning on doing potluck around 5.30. They're, we're trying to arrange chicken. I believe it has been arranged. I'm not. Yes, it has been arranged. Uh, donuts, coffee, and who knows what else on on Sunday morning, and tear down at two o'clock. Now, a little bit later on, I'm going to pass around a sign-up sheet and ask you guys to uh, sign up and commit to what you might do. It's going to be at the Charles Favalmar EOSC, 2306 Ivy Road. Very important. Do not park in the spaces in front of the EOC. It may be okay to stop and offload there, but then you've got to move the car. There's a parking lot to the east of the EOC uh, where we need to park. So are you parking behind the EOC? Well, you can, yeah, that's true. You probably should not park back there either. Are you going to do online sign up like we did last year? I know you, you have. We haven't made arrangements for that yet, but we certainly ought to do that. Yeah, that helps. You know, even if you just sign up as a floor. All right. So objectives. Contact as many stations as possible. Improve upon last year's score. Learn to set up and operate in unfamiliar settings. Again, demonstrating to the public, recruiting new hams, providing HF exposure to VHF, UHF, and have fun. So I want to emphasize, you know, when I moved to this era roughly four years ago, I myself was like being a hand of the train. I was nervous about the bottom and so on, but I think you thought you had to use it in about three minutes. Yeah, it's really simple. And I have a slide that I'm going to use to, to show that. So let's look at some details here. We came in eighth in the 3F division. These are the stations that came in ahead of us. We had 804 QSOs. Garden State had 847. Um, McHenry had um, a little bit over 1,000. Yeah. And the conditions were not very good. That's true. There's no question about that. Um, so it shouldn't be too difficult to get ahead of this one. Actually, I think it, it, with, a, with a reasonable effort, we ought to be able to finish up here a little higher, um, but we can do that in a variety of ways. Notice that we're at about 4,000 points and these people are a little bit ahead of us. So what's the strategy for trying to do better? Let's talk about that a little bit. We'll talk about field day rules too. Um, you can work each station no more than once per band or mode. Um, and of course we cannot use the, the work bands. That would be 30, 17, and 12. Uh, you can't co do contacts on the repeater. And if you're operating at the field day site or you have operated at the field day site or you're going to operate at the field day site and you're operating for a while from home, you cannot contact W4DO, cannot contact the field day because that doesn't count. That doesn't work. And the valid contacts must be logged with an exchange. In this case, it's going to be 3F Virginia, 3F Victor Alpha. Um, 
So on phone, that's 3 Foxtrot Victor Alpha, and on CW, 3 FVA. Um, the scoring is a, is a combination of points and sections and then bonus points. So you get one point for every phone contact and two points for every CW or, or digital contact. And then you multiply that times the number of stations, or number of sections. One point for phone, two points for <coughs> digital. Yeah, yeah. For CW. Right. And here are the various classes that, uh, that um, are out there in, for the field day contest. And isn't that a beautiful antenna? And wouldn't it be nice if we had that at field day? That's actually my, my antenna. A little, a little ad there. Um, so there are two strategies. Bill Pond actually would prefer to feed them. That's how he's going to, that's going to attract more contact. But um, hunt and pounce and occupy a frequency calling CQ field day. Jim, correct me if I'm wrong. You can probably work three to four times as many stations in the a, in a same time period doing CQ field day than you will with hunt and pounce. Because hunt and pounce, what you're doing is you're tuning around, looking for a station, keying it in to see if you've worked them before, you know, and then calling them, and then doing the exchange, and then logging them, and, and then moving on to do that. And, but if you sit there and do CQ field day, W4DO, and let them call you, you know, then you're going to work quite a bit more. So one of the things we can do that will increase our score tremendously is to do primarily the CQ field day operation. Right. The, where, where hunt and pounce is going to be really helpful is, is, is to go and find the sections that we haven't worked and work those. And but those, hunting, those stations that are sitting on a frequency that are not doing hunting pounds. Right. Yeah. 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 So, but anyway, that's one of the strategies. And the other strategy is to have more CW contacts. So, so do's and don'ts. Uh, do ask for repeats or fills. Uh, if you didn't, if you didn't, I mean, this is just simply the. Uh, the, the uh, class, you know, and, and the section and the call sign. So if you didn't pick up, you know, the, the, the section, then, then ask them again for the section. Uh, do use the standard phonetics. Don't clutter the exchange with extra words. Don't, uh, you know, don't, don't have a conversation. This is not a time to rag chew. You're really trying to work as many stations as you can. You know, you can certainly, you know, sometimes it, if somebody's really strong, you can say really strong, but but don't take up time because there are probably other people waiting to call you. Uh, and don't repeat what, what you heard to ask if that's correct. I mean, you just write down what you heard and, or key in what you heard if you've got all that information. Um, in other words, you don't say, thank you for the 3A Oklahoma. Yeah, that's really a waste of time. Okay, so this is the, uh, the, the main screen for the logging. You just simply enter the call that you worked, you enter the, the class and the section, and then uh, enter, enter, and you're, and you're done. This is helpful over here because it's showing you the, uh, the sections that you still need to work. So the, uh, the ones that are in blue, you've worked. The ones that are in red are the ones you need. Um, so that's, that's useful. And this will give you sort of a a score situation in terms of where where you are, uh, in terms of the uh, the war the uh, raw, war score. Hey, yes. Survey the room here, but my understanding was that you don't need to get multiple sections in that round for field day. Is that correct? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So your field day committee is still working hard to finalize the details. And by the way, there will be another meeting of the field day committee coming up this Saturday after the gathering. And everyone is welcome. Yeah, 9 o'clock. We're going to do this at 9 o'clock at Panera Bread. And um, so... Yeah, I want to thank you for your time and for your commitment to Field Day. I've got a sign-up sheet here that uh, basically gives you some options in terms of what, what I'd like, like you to do after you put your name and call sign down. Is to check the ones that you are, when you think you'll be there, whether it's going to be Friday setup, Saturday setup, the potluck dinner, operate on Saturday, operate the midnight shift with those of us who like to operate late at night. Uh, operate on Sunday or a teardown Sunday. So it gives you a... A year ago, the general membership authorized spending, was it up to five or six hundred dollars to buy a hex? Six hundred and some dollars, yes. Yeah. Right. Do you want to talk about that? And I think you had a motion about another ten. Yeah, there is a, a, a couple things here. Um, yeah, we, we are going to go ahead and get the hex beam, and that's going to be actually placed on order in the next day or two. Um, we for many years have benefited by having two canopies available, one that the club owns and one 10 by 20 canopy that has been loaned to us by K8RVR. Unfortunately, in, during the course of the past year, that canopy that, that Michael had has pretty much been destroyed because uh, it's been out on the deck for an entire year just sitting out there. Uh, and so what I would like the club to do, rather than depending upon the, uh, the largest of, of others, is to go ahead and buy another 10 by 20 um, canopy. And um, we, one with windows, then so for ventilation and uh, the sides and all the rest of that stuff, we're looking at $356.98. It's a, a 10 by 20 canopy uh, and an extra set of bungees because we know that over the years. Yeah, this is actually discounted too. By the way, it's a it's a forty nine percent discount. So, so, so I'd like a a, a motion from. Uh, you want to say up to three seventy five? Yeah, that'd be fine. Because some places charge shipping, some charge sales tax. Yeah. Do we get? If you order from Amazon, don't if you do Amazon Smile, then the club gets. A if you order through Amazon, since we're a five zero, what? We still pay sales tax. We do not get any breaks from the Virginia Department of Taxation on like sales buy something, you pay sales tax. Um, I guess the benefit we sell something, we don't collect sales tax either. No, we don't get a break. Believe oh, me, I've tried. Hmm. I was thinking that somebody sent me a document for sales tax exemption. I'll have to look. Okay. Pretty sure we did one. Okay, does someone want to make a motion then? I'll make a motion. We buy a canopy up to 375. I'll oh, second it. Oh, Move and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, now you'll check. <laughs> okay. Yes. I can come by and get you check. Might oh. I mention the GOTA station? Yes, please do. Yeah. So tell your friends who aren't hands or who are recently licensed, we will operate a get on the air station uh, specifically for new, inexperienced, non licensed people. I missed last year, but I can tell you that two years ago, Mayor Hooja came by, spent about 30 minutes trying to make a contact and failed. Um, uh, Cree Deeds came by, sat down, and within 30 seconds had made a contact in Delaware. I'm not saying anything about the political associations. <laughs> but, um, Actually, and, I think they're uh, both Democrats. That year, uh, Vicki Eicher, uh, known as an XYL, <laughs> uh, sat down and ran stations like you wouldn't believe oh. and set, held the record, still holds the record, for a number of contacts from the GOTA station. So, and we have, tell people, we have scripts, 
Mm -hmm. We have the whole thing laid out, and it's really easy to do. And the people who stop by, I think, have a lot of fun. Yeah. Mike and Marty Bill Phillips make it fun, too. Right. Yeah, Marty, Marty Weinberg, Coco, and and I will do it this year. Thank you very much. Uh, there is a poster available. Um, now, a few days, six, seven weeks from now. Um, I would encourage you if, if, to take these, to put them up someplace in public where they will be seen. But I would ask you, if you're going to do that, make sure that you monitor where you've put it because some places will let you have a poster up for a while and then they'll clean off the space and so that way if you need if it, it disappears between now and field day uh, you could go back and and um, and put another one back up. Our publicity officer who wasn't able to make it would prefer that we don't even hang them until right after Memorial Day. So maybe June August or something like that. Yep. And he's gonna e he or boss someone's gonna email every club member a PDF version of those mm -hmm. because you might want to print it on your home printer. Yep. Let's we put them in YMCA, gyms, doctors' offices, the library. Panera Bread. bread. Pardon me? Panera Bread. Panera Bread for sure. Yep. And we've had people show up as a result of the post. Yeah, and we've uh, been very fortunate because we've had a number of organizations that have been generous in the, in the past couple of years. The the folks with the uh, with the porta potties, the people at Panera Bread, uh, just to name a couple. Larry, you, do you want to go? No, well, definitely, we couldn't operate at all if we didn't have cavalry septic to give the two porta potties because we have no access to the emergency communication center uh, as its doors are locked and, and obviously uh, not, not permitted in. But um, that's very important. They have assured me, uh, Mary Ellen has assured me that there's that they will be there on Friday afternoon to set up, and so we should be covered there. We also have uh, various contacts. I, in fact, was talking to the store manager at uh, Trader Joe's this afternoon, and they, they were delighted because they don't have that many uh, requests for donations for June. So I'm early, early, you know, wow. that's great. Uh, I've also talked to Fresh Market, and they're going to help us out. Uh, Starbucks has offered some coffee and other things. So, you know, it's a, it's a process. I've contacted McDonald's and uh, Dunkin' Donuts. I haven't heard back on them, but at least the, the overtures have been made. I know that mm -hmm. we're going to be talking to Bodo's Bakery as well. So uh, it, it's a matter of just keeping everybody's uh, blood sugar up. And, uh, so you don't Caffeine know, levels high and enough to. Yeah, it's too bad Devil's Backbone Brewery can't contribute. Well, yeah. <laughs> that's the well, negative is the fact you can't have any alcohol. Yeah, I needed to. I, I I need to talk about that. There is we can't have any alcohol there. And when I told my friend Stu that, he said that's un American. I mean, yeah. after all, <laughs> I mean you can't field day without beer. I mean, really. Um, and and for those of you that's a, a little history. Uh, the the um, field day and, and beer was where the uh, uh, the beer can vertical was invented, yeah. and uh, uh, for those of you who are old enough to remember 807s, um, you know that's another name for a bottle of beer. Yeah. Uh, so 807s were final tubes in the tube transmitters of the 1950s and 60s. So yeah, did you bring the 807s? <laughs> yes. No, no, that's a that's a rule because of where we are. Okay. Yeah, that's a. Yes. Larry, just one last thing for the board meeting to do, so we can get over to dance quicker. Could you make a motion for the general membership for a budget for the chicken place purchase? I don't remember what your budget is like, 150 or 200 max, or try that to be less than that. Well, remember we have the. The, meeting. We have a June meeting, but we had the 300. Uh, we have already set aside we 300 did? for. Okay. Yeah. Well, you yeah. weren't there. <laughs> so you have money for beverages. Yep. And, and yeah. we're also going to be uh, taking some of the consumables, the paper plates and things like that. We need to reimburse. Mm. Uh, we, I, sorry, we need to re, uh, refresh, shall we say, the consumable 
products uh, that we've used up over about a three year period. Yeah. So this year will be a little bit more expensive than in the past, but I think we're still oh, you're ahead of the game. We're ahead of the game. Well, anyway, field day, June 24th, 25th. It's a lot of fun. Yes? One thing, if I may, uh, in regard to the logging and so forth that you were talking earlier about, um, a suggestion, and that is that if someone has got mic fright and things of that nature, you're always welcome to assist the person who's on air. Uh, they could certainly be, it, it's another pair of ears to listen uh, if all the cacophony of noise and so forth as to what's going on. I know that Dennis does a fantastic job on CW, but he also likes to have somebody help out uh, for logging. And Jim prefers to do it by and himself. Jim prefers to be alone. So, I mean, it's just a matter yeah. of getting yourself sorted out with whoever is operating. Offer the fact that you're there available if you'd like to. It's a way of also watching what someone else is doing on HF and their operation. And it gives you some experience too, and I think more confidence that you can then get on the air yourself and, and know what to do. I would also tell you that if, if you are aspiring to operate CW but haven't done much of that yet, logging for somebody who is doing CW is a great way to pick up that speed. I did that one time years ago with Harry. And that was that was a hoot. We had field day. I logged for him, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, we used to years ago, and I, I I don't have I have the picture somewhere, but I didn't have it a uh, digital copy of it. I have a picture of John Gray and Harry. They used to open up field day. They, what we would do is we'd set down a QRP rig, and they would reel off about five QRP contacts because at that point there was a bonus for for working QRP low power QRP less yeah. than five watts. And the two of them worked together, and it was a joy to watch. What about a safety officer? Yes, I do need. I, I need a safety officer. I need. I need somebody who is willing to step up and be the safety officer for field day. That essentially involves uh, making sure that we are setting it up in a in a safe manner, and that we aren't uh, putting lines where people are going to walk, and and uh, we have enough space between uh, ourselves and things that we might get in trouble with. So the AWR publishes in the field packet. Yep. Safety officers checklist that some about And we get points for having a safety officer oh, if I recall. Officer, when he goes home, could assign someone to be his oh, yeah. example. So yes. Right. One more thing about the uh, software, the N N3 FJP. Uh, I was introduced to it by uh, Jim Owen at K4 CGY and many of you have used it, uh, I think, uh, so you know what it's all about. One thing that I like about it is the fact that if you do happen to have a, a, du a duplicate, mm -hmm. you know, it flashes at you and lets you know immediately that that, so you're not wasting your time. So that's where right. you input it, and immediately it, it says uh, this is a dupe, so you don't continue on. Yeah, and a good example of wasted time in a contest is to tell the guy he's a dupe. Yeah. Don't say it. Yeah. Just, go just on. go on. Yeah. Don't say it. Yeah. You're a dupe, man. Oh yeah. No, that's not what I meant. I mean, but you know. So there you go. Are there any questions? Thank you very much. Field day is a lot of fun. Please, please, get involved. Thank you.